Hello everybody, this is Agroad. It is August 28th, 2020. I am joined by the Splinterlands community and my esteemed co-founder, uh, Yabap Matt. And um, I don't know, I'm grateful. It's another it's another wonderful week in the Splinterlands. We got some, uh, some stuff to talk about, like dice. We got some dice that just got out there and I'm pretty thrilled about that. And um, I don't know, we got... We, uh, Matt and I were able to go sit down uh, yesterday. We had like a, a nice long uh, office office meeting trying to look through uh, land expansion, guild wars, and um, just some, some basic strategy for how we want to go forward. And I'm feeling pretty good about that. And um, all things said, you know, this it's it's a great time to be in the Splinterlands. I'm excited and I'm grateful that you guys are here and have all your questions. Uh, Matt, any kind of setup or introduction you'd like to do before we get started today? Pretty good one. Um, I guess, you know, it's up to you how much we want to talk about anything we, we talked about yesterday. Oh, I want to talk about all of it. So. All right, then. That's, that's good with me. All right, sweet. Because, um, you know, to, to be frank, I, I really feel like uh, we nailed down the, the vast majority of what we needed to get done for uh, setting up the land presale and having a really good plan for that, uh, and also how Guild Wars will uh, be working and how those two are going to play into one another. I feel like I feel like we have a nice, really high level strategy, and that's that's enough to uh, get our designer kind of putting screens together and um, and getting this stuff built. So I'm pretty stoked for that. Um, so I, I, um, so what do we, should we, do you want to do a review of some of that? Do you just want to talk about that? Because it, it's a little rough for an AMA, uh, because they might not necessarily know what to ask. So do you feel like, should we go through kind of a high level of, uh, what we're expecting for the land, uh, pre-sale and, and some thoughts on, uh, guild tournaments and how those might be coming together? Yeah, I think you could... There's, there's a couple of quick questions in the chat, which I could just bang out All first. Right. And then Let's, if you want, you can talk about what we put together. Huh? Go for it. I don't know. It's called, it's called Dice versus Asmare um, because Essence Orbs were called Orbs and not Essences. Uh, I don't know. So just kind of sticking with that. I didn't, I didn't really put too much thought into the naming of the edition. Um, I mean, technically, the addition is Asmare Dice, but we just abbreviated Dice, just like we abbreviated Essence Orbs, like, uh, Orbs. And then, you know, 23,500 Dice have been sold. Yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm really happy with that number. Uh, I wasn't... I know some people were worried that, like, the first 50,000 were going to sell out in an hour. I kind of knew that wasn't going to happen just because of, you know, the amount of dark energy crystals that would require versus the number available currently. Um... But I think getting to about half that is in like a day is, is fantastic. Um, and then, then we'll see how it goes from there. Yeah, I'm, I'm stoked. Like that, that's, the, that's my short answer. 23,500 is fantastic. Um, you know, it's like 10% of all of the, the dark energy crystals in existence were, were burned out of existence in a day. Like that's, that's fantastic. Uh, Neil. Yeah, so I want to address that um, because I, you, I heard and I talked about that yesterday and I looked into it. Not that many cards were burned. Uh, what happened was the, the total amount being reported on Hive Engine was incorrect, um, which I didn't, and it, it was inadvertently fixed with the release of the dice um, because I had to push an updated version of our Hive Engine script. Uh, so basically, the the um, the amount being reported on Hive Engine, which was around like four hundred million, um, was had not been taking into account any of the rewards that were being given out, like where dark crystals were given out. Um, as a so, I mean, nothing nothing changed. I mean, no more dark energy crystals were created. It was just the number on Hive Engine um, was fixed along with the as as Mare dice release. So the actual number was around 550 million, um, and then 
you know, that was reduced by over 50 million from the cards being burned. So, um, you know, I apologize about that. I didn't even realize that, you know, it, it had been being underreported or that it had been inadvertently fixed until we looked into it. Um, yeah, airdrops. A lot of people have asked about the airdrops. Um, so I want to say that, first of all, like the, the details of the airdrop are still TBD. Um, but assuming that we are going to be using the same formulas for calculating all of that as we use for Untamed, which is, is likely, um, it would require uh, um, like a minimum of 150 dice to to be eligible for the you know guaranteed one airdrop card, assuming the card is of legendary rarity, which is again uh, what we expect. Um, there's been a few players who have brought up you know concerns about the way we're doing the randomness of the airdrops, so that's something we might consider um, and, and getting player feedback on that. Uh, like if you know if it makes sense to just do a straight airdrop, like for every 150 packs you purchase, you get a card. Um, versus it being random and having some people, you know, you buy one dice, could get a card, but then there's some people who buy a thousand, you know, and they, they only get the guaranteed one. Um, so that's something, you know, we'll kind of look to the community to, to see what, what you guys might prefer there. Okay. And yeah, to, to buy this question. Um, yeah, the threshold will change as the airdrops go on right so and and the reason for that is because you know if we add there's there's five legendaries in the set right now if we add a sixth then if you were normally opening packs one in 150 packs would have that sixth legendary um then if we had a seventh it would be you know a, more than that etc going on so um you know assuming if, if all five airdrops were legendary cards i think it would end up being 250 dice is the minimum guaranteed for the fifth airdrop. So basically to get all five of them. You can go ahead now, Ivor. Okay. So, uh, I'm stoked. These are, these are things that have gone from uh, theoretical topics to um, more more detail and more planning to like really we got... Um, we have like a set plan around how this thing is going to going to start going out. So, uh, the main thing I think we should talk about is the land presale. Um, so we, we want to go sell some land, uh, that land, it will be, um, you're, you're going to have the opportunity to, to purchase it, but it's going to have, um, but you won't know everything. You won't ha have everything to begin with. You know, you, we won't have every single detail worked out. We won't have every single, like, plot on the map. Um, and as a consequence of that, we're planning to go give some pretty hefty discounts. Um, and, and I imagine that we're going to do a couple different, um, like, initial expeditions. So the, the players are going to go, uh, like, uh, purchase a claim or potentially purchase many claims uh, on, this, on this continent. Uh, which we're imagining to be Mount Mox, um, and you will have the option to either purchase one plot, um, we're calling a hundred plots a zone, and we're calling a thousand plots a sector, and we'll be giving various levels of discount if you are buying a single plot, or, or, or you're buying the claim to go find out which plot you're getting, because uh, that will still have a randomized feature to it, you could get a zone, which will have a, 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 a decent discount. Um, I think we're targeting a 15% discount if you're buying 100 plots. And if you're buying 1,000 plots, uh, then we're targeting a 25% discount. Um, so, the, so overall, we're imagining that um, when, like, sometime in 2021, when this whole thing is live and going and... Um, there's going to be some undiscovered land still that's going to be for sale. You know, at that point, plots will cost uh, $20. But now in this kind of like intro round, if you would like to get access, uh, we're going to go sell these at a 50% discount initially. Uh, so then that makes it $10. Uh, 
And if you are uh, buying in bulk, then you're getting additional discounts off of that $10. So um, now Mr. Dragon is asking, are the lands attached to guilds or to players or both? Uh, we're imagining that there will be some land that's going to be uh, guild building related and there'll be some land that's player uh, related. So, um, you know, maybe for the location kind of stuff, we do imagine will matter to some extent. Um, but it, at least in the initial game uh, that we're going to roll out, we're not we're not thinking too, too much about uh, adjacency and like logistics of travel. You know, there's there's too much to build um, just to get this thing started and really get all the key parts of it going. So that that's going to come a little bit later. Uh, are those prices at par value for deck? Yeah, uh, Matt, we're accepting dark energy crystals for this and we're just going to treat that as uh, a thousand dark energy crystals equals one dollar. Yeah, of course. I mean, always. Yep. That's not the plan. So yeah, so if you want even deeper discounts, you'll have dark energy crystals. You'll hoard those, and you'll purchase land with those. And if you're buying like a full sector, that's twenty five percent off. If um, because it's that first expedition, there'll be limited numbers of plots that are available, but that would be fifty percent off. And if you're getting deck that's at like um, you know uh, not quite a, a thousand to one. Uh, or like you're getting like a 50, 60% discount on, on deck, uh, then all of that leads to this is a pretty phenomenal time to, uh, if, if you're interested in land and ownership of these things, and, um, then this is really like the, the best opportunity to start getting into that. Um, yeah, if I could, I mean, I feel like there was a lot of stuff out there and I wanted to rephrase it a little bit and, you know, try to give everyone a, a chance to let that all sink in. Go for it. Um, so, um, the, the idea from the, the lore and the world perspective is that there are going to be some expeditions with, you know, from some company uh, that are going into uncharted territories, right? Um, so there's, there's these uncharted territories. They don't know what's there. They're going to do these expeditions to discover, you know, the, the value and resources in, in those lands. Um, now, they need to fund this expedition, right? And so, you know, if people want to fund this expedition, they're selling claims to that land ahead of time. So that's what you'll be buying in the pre-sale. Um, you'll be buying claims to this unknown land in the expedition. Now, as a, a benefit for, for funding this ahead of time when you don't know what you'll be getting, um, you, you'll have a 50% discount initially, and that discount will likely decrease over time. Um, but so it's a, you know it's incentive to to get in before you you have all the information. So then um, you know that'll go for a certain amount of time. Then the expedition will happen, um, and then you know the land will be discovered, and everyone who bought these claims at a discount ahead of time will get their plots or their zones or their sectors or whatever they 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 bought. But then some of it you know not all not all of the land will have been claimed. So you might have some plots, and you'll see it on the map, and you might see some other plots uh, that are that haven't been claimed yet, and then you can buy those. But at that point, it would be full price, right? So that's that's you know that's a choice that you can make whether you want to get in kind of ahead of time um, at, at the discount or or wait until you have more information about that, um, and then. And then again, as Agro said, there will be like bulk purchases. So if you want to buy an entire sector of land, you know, you can get 25% off the 50% discount. So it's like, you know, basically hugely discounted if you're buying in bulk in the pre-sale. And then also if you purchase dark energy crystals on the market, um, you know, potentially further discounts. Uh, and, and to Neil's question here, I know I'm missing some questions, but it's relevant. Um, so the, if you buy an entire sector, it will be a contiguous, you know, 1,000 plots altogether. A zone is going to be 100 plots altogether. Um, the plan is for if you buy individual plots, we'll, we'll try to keep them together as, as best as possible for each, you know, each account. Um, but as Agro said, you know, we're not going to at least initially have... Um, you know, it won't matter so much if, if your plots are right next to each other or anything, but in the future there may be advantages to that. Uh, 
So, you know, it, it may make sense for people if, if there's a bunch of people who all want to buy some land, you can get together and just all buy a sector together and then split up the individual plots however you want or, or anything like that. Um, and then uh, there was a question about whether, uh, I'm scrolling up here, sorry. Um, will they be splinter themed? So I think our plan is that the, for the initial land sale and expedition, um, I think I mentioned it would be on the, the island or continent of Mount Box, which is not specific to any splinter. So initially, um, you know, there'll be land associated with different splinters all available in the first land sale. In the future, we may, um, there may be some land available in the other splinters, islands or continents that would be more specific to those splinters. Um, and again, this is all information that we will be available at the time of the pre-sale, right? So it's not going to be like, you know, we'll explain this is all the land that's going to be available in total or how it will be sold and when. Um, but initially the plan is like that the expedition is to is to Mount Mox, which is a splinter specific. There may be some, you know, in the future if, if other land is available, like the Mount Mox land may have some advantages. So I think that um, that gets us caught up on the sort of general general plan for the sale. So I imagine I imagine that there's something like uh, one million total plots that are available for sale. Uh, and the island might end up being slightly bigger than that because we'll probably want to keep some for the game. Um, but most, um, but that should be um, the the parts that will actually be available for sale for players to own, acquire, and uh, build out on. That's going to be um, uh, that we're targeting one million total plots. Um, no, I'm sorry. So it's a, it's, a, it, it's 100,000 plots, right? Yeah, yeah sorry. 100,000 plots is right. for Just for the pre-sale and like initial version of land. So the lands will will be finite. Um, but we'll, our plan is to make the lands finite. But again, that's something we'll let everybody know before the pre-sale goes live. Um, and to Neil's question, um, we don't have an exact date, but... It, it will definitely be by the end of the year. The land presale will be live uh, a little sooner than that. Uh, we do want to work on some things like Guild Wars first that we'll talk about. Um, so you know, there's there's some time, you know, a couple, two to three months uh, before we look at the presale going live. Uh, so within the land, um, there's going to be three primary types of uh, of land that you'll get. So when you kind of reveal it. You, the, the land will be one of uh, four key types. It can be a vacant land, it can be a mine, it can be an expedition, and it can be a dungeon. So in a dungeon, you have the ability to farm monsters, uh, kill them, and out of that, you'll get shards. And maybe there'll be some nicer options in some of these than just flat out killing them, but you will defeat monsters, and your reward for that will be shards. Um, in these expeditions, you'll go exploring, and out of the exploration, you'll get essences. And out of the mines, uh, you'll get kind of your key resources that are tied to each splinter. And so it, as we get into crafting, you'll take your shards, and you'll take some essences, and you'll combine them, and that's what will lead to the items and spells that you can create. And those will be coming out of buildings, and will be uh, you'll be putting together those buildings um, primarily using the resources that you've harvested out of the different mines. Uh, and maybe we'll toss some of the the essences into that as well. But that gives you kind of a a, a big picture of uh, you want to craft stuff. Well, if you want to craft it, you're going to need shards, but the shards have to be flavored by the essences. And in order to get your dungeon to the higher levels, to be able to get the, the better shards and the better essences so that you can craft the legendaries, uh, you'll have to go have building improvements and that will come from uh, the resources that you get. So the vacant plots is where you'll put um, you know, the buildings that are, are for storage of resources, that are for uh, building items and spells for the different splinters. Um, 
And your mines is obviously where you're building the mines. Your expedition type of land is where you can build those expeditions. And then finally, uh, if you're if you're lucky, you'll be able to go get. Um, you might capture one of these dungeons, and there you'll basically have your own private uh, place where the you'll be growing these monsters so that uh, they can be harvested and uh, collecting those shards. And that's kind of the, the big picture of the different types of land and then all the different building types that are gonna that are gonna go into this. Uh, can I go through and answer some of the questions? Yeah, that can please do. Okay. Uh, so so to Bafi's first question about, you know, longtime alpha users or alpha uh, card holders that so overall you won't need to, you don't need to partake in the lands thing at all if you don't want to. The whole the whole idea of the lands is it's sort of like, it's it's sort of another game or type of game added on top of Splinterlands, and the goal of the whole thing is to produce these new item and spell cards. So um, you know it's it's possible there will still be a version of the game if people want to play without using the items and spell cards. Um, that'll come down to you know how much demand for that there is. Um, but if you want to get the new items and spell cards, you can just purchase them on the market from the people who are crafting them with the lands. You don't have to yourself be involved in the lands at all if you don't want to. Um, and uh, another thing is we plan for the, the existing game cards, the monsters and the summoners, to be able to work on the land and you know add different benefits. And that would be the type of thing where we can add additional value to the older cards and to gold foil cards where um, you know they either produce better items, you know, working on the lands, or the you know more resources or reduced costs or, or whatever it may be. Um, so there's the, the there's plans for all this. It, it's to allow people who you know maybe there are some people who don't like the gameplay as much with you know the battling with the cards, but they can. It's more of an empire building type game. Um, and they can craft cards that can then be purchased by the people who are playing. Uh, so that's kind of how the whole economy fits in there, and it's a way to additional way to give older gold foil cards new new value without making them better in the in the regular gameplay. Um, moving on, Bize asks, uh, will they will they be consumable permanents or both types will exist? Um, it's I mean, it's mostly still TBD in the sense that everything here is really still TBD, so that it's just our plan to date. I think in general, um, we, we want most things to be permanent, but there may be certain consumable items. So we'll see. We'll see there. But the idea is that the items and spell cards will work similarly, where you need a bunch of them to combine together to level. So it's not just, you, you don't just make one sword. You know, you make, you make a whole bunch, and then people can, can level them up to wherever they want. Um, so in that sense, they're, they're sort of consumable, but not other than that. Um, and then VC Dragon's asking if they will be 2D or 3D. Um, I mean, we're still working out the details of how the art will look. I don't think we're, you know, just capable of making like a Clash of Clans style, um, you know, style artwork and gameplay. So I think it will be more like to the images that you click on and, and interact with, uh, but we'll see. And, and I think before before the presale goes live, we're gonna show you know examples of all this. So we'll create, we'll show some different land types, and we'll show examples of the map and how it will look, and what the buildings will look like, and you know what the options are, and, and kind of how give give you a, a taste of how the whole thing will will work when it's all built. Um, so yeah, so then Bafi asked more like, you know, you'll fall behind if you don't invest in lands. So the, the idea is you, you don't have to invest in lands at all. The, the lands will produce new cards, and in general, like with any trading card game, I mean, you need to keep up on the latest cards, at least to some degree, to remain competitive. But as I said, we can also add different types of formats. So there could be a no items and spells format um, if there's enough demand for that. There's already tournament formats, so there could still be formats of just alpha card formats or alpha and beta card formats or whatever. So, um, you know, the idea is that no one has to invest in lands at all or be involved in that at all. 
if they just want to keep playing the game. Um, they may not be as competitive in all the formats, though. And that's just, I mean, you know, we, we can't not sell stuff and keep building this for you guys. So we're, we're doing our best to try to try to balance those things. Um, and will lands factor into Guild Wars or PvP? Um, yes. I, I'm, I mean, yes. Yeah, so yeah, the answer is yes. I don't know specifically if we'll have if it'll be having to worry about your lands being attacked and raided or uh, you know, exactly how that will work. But um, you know, the the whole point is that they're all you know they're all they're all tied in together here. Like at the very least, Guild Wars will help you. You know, you'll need land to help improve your guild and build new buildings and stuff, which will help in the Guild Wars and, and vice versa. Um, question: Will building upgrades and manufacturing spells and items take time? Yeah, the plan is is that they will take time, and we don't, you know, we don't want someone just uh, you know dumping in a bunch of money and having the max level stuff immediately. So I think it will follow somewhat of the class of clans model um, for for upgrading things. You need to spend some resources and take some time. And there will be options to like spend dark energy crystals and maybe credits to uh, to improve or speed up things. Uh, and will land be rentable? Yes, that's going to be a huge. That's a good good question and an important point. So you know, same as with cards, and hopefully you know we'll. It, that's something I've mentioned on all the AMAs. You know, we plan on improving the rental market and experience for cards, but for lands especially, if people just want to buy a bunch of lands and don't want to deal with all this crap just rent it out to other people, you know what I mean? Um, and, you know, let, let someone else manage your lands and make resources and craft things. And, you know, you can, you can get a rental rate for that. So that's, that's a super important part of this. Um, and definitely going to be included. Um, let's see. Uh, is there a guide somewhere as to what is to know about land at this point? Um, we put an initial post up like a bunch of months ago, maybe six months ago, that kind of gave our overall vision. Um, nothing has really changed from that vision. We're just starting to put more details into it. Um, this is the first time we're kind of sharing any more details that I'm aware of, but there's gonna be, you know, all this is gonna be put out in, in some type of public post before the pre-sale goes live. Um, so people have all this information outside of this AMA. And some things may change between between what we're saying now and, and the pre-sale also. Um, so, two D like Crypto Brewmaster. I haven't uh, I haven't tried Crypto Brewmaster yet, but I, that is on my list. Um, and so, the current game will continue to exist, and there will be a second game ranked tournaments where you play with spells. Um, yeah, items and spells. So that's that's the idea, and it's a question of um, you know if there's not enough demand for for two separate formats, then we may not be able to do it. But I think I think the goal is to allow people to just not if they just want to play with the cards and don't want to do the items and spells, we'd like to provide a, a format at the very least in tournaments because that's easy where that's available. Um, so uh, it's kind of the type of thing where it's a little play it by ear, um, but technically it's you know very easy to do, and and that's our our plan there. Um, how will the lands exist technically, same as cards, since they will be, are unique? Yeah, lands will be NFTs, the same as cards, and they'll be handled the same as cards. Um, you know, cards are like ERC 721s. I mean, you can, you can transfer your cards to an ERC 721 contract on Ethereum, and the same exact thing will happen with lands. Each one will be unique. So you might have, uh, you know, there might be a hundred different forest plots, right? Um, but, you know, different forest plots could have, you know, different things. Like some could have certain resources on them that others don't, or some could have, you know, different climates that make them you know, have lower building costs, you know, or things are easier to, you know, faster to create or whatever. So each different, each different plot of land will be a unique NFT with different attributes that will, you know, affect its value and its use in the game. Um, 
and is it possible to merge this land with a project like Decentraland for VR experience? Um, I don't know about merging it with Decentraland, but I mean, a VR experience could certainly be built. I don't think that's something that, you know, currently with our resources, we're in the position to build. Um, but there's no technical reason why that couldn't happen. And if, if a project like Decentraland wanted to work with us, I think it would be very important to do that. Um, or, or maybe D City, you know, we could work out something with them. I mean, in general, we're always, you know, we talk to a lot of different games and groups and organizations, and we're very, very interested in welcoming to doing any type of like integrations and cross promotions. Um, and the untamed title affecting land. So, you know, we said when we launch the untamed title and titles in general, that they will have an effect on lands. There may even be, um, so, so the, the actual effect or benefit it has is still TBD, but that's, you know, that's something we've been clear about and we plan to do, that the titles will, will come into play and add some benefits in the land. There may even be some type of governance structure um, over the lands or different areas of lands that can, uh, you know, potentially uh, tweak some different parameters. Uh, you know, this is all kind of stuff that we're still working out and it may not be for phase one. Um, but that's that's the idea, and that's potentially where the titles will come into play. Um, so then, Lord Winty asks: Are there going to be unique assets for lands? For example, in Sandbox, um, there are unique assets that you will only in a specific piece of land. Um, yeah, so I'm not I'm not totally familiar with. Uh, how sandbox works and how their asset works assets work. Our plan is that you know different lands might have certain resources that are more rare or more common. Um, and then also certain types of buildings can only be built on certain types of land, right? Um, I, I would mention like kind of dungeon types where there are you know abundance of monsters that can be killed to collect shards. Um, you know, and then there's certain you know certain types of Buildings, you know, you can't probably build something to make uh, death splinter spells, you know, on a out of a swamp or something like that. So I'm not sure if that is sort of similar to sandbox or what you're asking, but that's that's kind of the plan for different lands and I guess assets and and the buildings will be sort of tied to the land. Um, so you know, you could have a white. It's just like in real life, you know, you can have a bank, vacant plot or you could have a plot with a you know producing factory on it that's worth more. Um, so that's the idea here. And Matt Clark, thanks for the uh, the link drop there to the original post. Um, let's see, uh, Dean Dan is suggesting campaign co-op missions so guilds can work together. Um, I don't think that's something we really discussed, but I well, like that. That's uh, the that's PVE. I mean, that's the that's the boss fights. Okay. Right. Yeah, that's a good opportunity for that. I don't know if we specifically discussed that being like guilds working together, though, or just one no. one guild working together okay. itself versus working with another guild. But I think that's cool. Yeah, I mostly thought of that as just your one guild, but um, yeah, I don't. We might we might try to think through some other bigger things where now you need guild cooperation. Um, yeah, I think that would be cool if there was like a super, super boss fight that like all the guilds need to collaborate together to try to beat for like the general good of, of everybody. So that's a cool idea. Um, can lands be burned and destroyed? I don't think we plan to allow the destruction of land. Um, but you... I mean, I would think you'd be able to destroy a building on the land, if, like if you wanted to build something different. Um, and then Neil is asking, how many permutations are we looking at? Essence types, shard production rates, resource types. Um, the plan is it to be splinter focused. So there's six splinters, uh, five main ones, and dragons. So there'll be a resource one resource and one essence for each of those. So six resources, six essences. Um, shards, I don't, the current plan is that those won't be splinter specific. 
So shards will have like rarities. They'll be like legendary shards versus common ones, and they'll make they're probably gold shards also. And the shards can be combined with the splinter essences to then make a, a card of, from that particular splinter. Um, and then Agra mentioned four different types of land, and there'll be those four types, you know, a different version for each splinter. So like a vacant plot, and you know, for the earth splinter might be a forest, whereas for um, for water splinter it might be a, a river. Um, so there's there's going to be I guess 24 or so different types of plots, um, different types of land plots that you'll be able to get, and then you know different buildings that will be available for each of those. So it's going to be pretty. I mean, pretty involved and robust, and we, we kind of feel like that's that's what the game is, right? That's what's interesting, and that's what's fun, and we, we very much would like to make it so that it's not just, oh, here's what you do, it's just, you know, basic follow this formula and you make your cards, but it'll actually be, you know, I, I'm not sure if it's some level of skill, but just like, you have to, you have to manage your land well. You, you have to know what buildings to build where and why, what you know, what monster and summoner cards that have working in your buildings, you know, for different conditions, for the most optimal way to produce different things, um, you know, so, and which is which is what the, really what the game is, what the, you know, for people who want to participate in the land and do that, like, that's what makes it a fun and interesting game and not just some, like, you know, thing you just set up and go click a button every day um, and not have to think about. So... You know, I think we, we want as much as possible to add a lot of different different types of things, different options, different ways people can go about things and people can, you know, work to discover what are more efficient ways to create things and then, you know, share guides and, and discuss and all that stuff. Uh, so that was a really long, <laughs> really long answer to that one. Sorry about that. Um, and Agro, feel free to jump in if I'm talking too much. No, I kind of want to. I kind of want to hop over to, to guilds for a little bit. I know that people are still asking questions about lands, but these two things kind of play into each other. So I kind of want to give a high level of uh, guild tournaments and kind of what that's shaping out to look like, and then start talking through how these two things might be interacting with each other. Uh, yeah, that, that's that's good. I mean, the other questions were like. Peak Monsters updates. Uh, that's you know that's for Jarvi and Asgarth to answer. Um, so yeah, I think we can. We, you want to just start talking about Guild Wars a bit? Yeah. So let me let me hop over there for just a moment. Um, so Guild Wars has been described in a in a couple different places. Um, and and yesterday's conversation, we we really only made one fundamental change, but I think it's actually a really good one. Um, so the, the same, the, in your guild, there should be a spot in the guild that says go to war or, uh, you know, hold off on war. And, uh, it's going to be automatic when the guilds, uh, all go to war at the same time. And the, um, and the guild war will be kind of a three step process, the, or a three day process. The first day you'll see all the different, um, matches that are available uh, and that way your guild has time to sort of figure out who's going to tackle which fights. Uh, in day two, uh, then you'll actually do all the battling. And then in day three, you'll kind of have a day to catch results and see how it all went. Uh, and then if you're in the war, it'll just automatically start up again. Um, so these are these guild wars are on a three-day cycle. Uh, and, and everybody, there's not like, you don't challenge a specific guild, you don't... You don't have to like uh, the the matchmaking. This was kind of uh, Matt's what I think is quite brilliant idea. Is uh, what we're going to do is we're going to make it kind of Royal Rumble style, where all the level one guilds uh, are going to be fighting each other in this guild war. So it, it's not going to be versus like in Clash of Clans and you do a guild war. It's versus where it's one guild versus another. But in in our style, it's going to be all the level one. Uh, guild halls and maybe even all the level one and two guild halls will be combined and uh, and fighting each other. Uh, there's probably a maximum on that because if there end up being a hundred guilds, uh, it's not fun to have to go do an under an anytime tournament with a hundred battles uh, per player. 
So there, there'll be some limits on this of like maybe we'll cap it at up to a maximum of ten guilds in the in the same guild war, but we're gonna have some uh, Royal Rumble style where uh, you'll pick which which kind of basic uh, league limits and gold foil or standard foil rule sets uh, that you want to participate in, and it's kind of like the trick of the the guild is that. Um, like at an early level, there might be some that are novice, some that are bronze, and maybe one that's silver. And you might have some that are gold foil novice, gold foil bronze, and gold foil silver. And that's kind of the whole thing. But by the time that you get up to like the maximum level arena, it's going to be more towards like gold foil uh, diamond level and just diamond level decks in general. So you'll have um, like the quality of your collection will have to go up. Uh, the higher the, the guild level you want to participate in. But we still want to make it so that like lots of people can participate. So not every single spot is going to be like a gold foil diamond deck that's not really sustainable. So there'll be a mix of all these different, um, you know, I, I don't quite know the best term for it, but like, uh, you know, different deck setups where it's like, is are you a gold foil diamond? Are you a regular foil novice? Where do you fit in? Yeah, you, you will go fill in the fights that are all that novice level, all that silver level, all that gold level, uh, and that will kind of be your role within the guild. And then it, within that, you know, you're going to have to go fight all the other people from all the other guilds that have that corresponding level that they want to go tackle. So, uh, and then how the guild does is, it, you know, there's going to be, um, you know, ten people fighting uh, ten... I guess you'd have nine other matches or so, um, and you know you'll you'll total all of that up and you'll figure out how many wins do we get and how many losses do we get, and that's going to determine your ranking within that guild war. Uh, and then within that, you'll start getting what we're we're calling them internally guild faction points. I, I don't think that we're going to stick with this name, um, but just as we're thinking through this and designing it, uh, depending on. Um, what league you're in, and depending on how well you did in the league, you'll start earning guild faction points. And there will be a shop, uh, which is actually going to be a guild building. So uh, you're going to have to go collect some of these guild faction points and put them towards you know, improving your shop so that the shop can be a max level building, which will allow you to buy the, uh, some of the best loot in the game. And then this is, this is where we're going to have the tie-in between the Guild Wars and the land, is that some of the things that you'll be able to go purchase within the Guild War will allow your land to get certain benefits. So maybe it'll reduce your production time or reduce your production cost. Uh, maybe it'll be individual. Maybe it'll be for everybody in the Guild. Uh, it could just be for all the common level things. It could be for all the, the legendary pieces. It could affect... Um, you know, the production of all mines. It could just uh, help the production of all mines on a certain, uh, from a certain splinter type um, at a certain level. So there, there's all these kind of ways that we can tweak this, but ultimately, as you are uh, engaging in your guild battles and you are maximizing your arena so you can get to the highest level cards, so you can be in the best level competition, so that you have the, the biggest pool of, of guild faction points that you can earn, uh, so that you can then uh, get the, the pieces and components and uh, improvements that will make it so that you are the most efficient uh, land producer that's out there. So that's kind of the, the high level. Matt, do you want to translate what I've said in, in any other ways? I know that, that, was, that was pretty good. And I mean, I'll, I'll mention, I know some people like tend to get up in arms about certain things, you know, when, when we talk about them. Um, you know, a, a key thing to remember here is like, this is our initial plan. You know, we're going to put out more details as it comes closer. We listen to player feedback and changes. And then after it's released, you know, we, we see how things go. We see what things work, what things don't, what people like, what they don't like will change things so you know if you hear something where you like you know, that that sucks or this could be done better you know just let us know and, and we'll talk about it first saying like you know, some people don't handle these things in the most constructive manner so that's all I'll, I'll mention there 
Okay. Um, did do you do you want to introduce the council at all, or should we? Uh, do we have enough new stuff for now? Yeah, let's leave. All right. The other things till they're all right. Out. So th there are other things that we're we're looking to go implement and uh, and put into this, but um, but anyway, so that those are kind of the main the main projects that are on uh, some of the roadmap here that we're looking to go put into place. Uh, we have um, we're 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 looking to go implement round two of the collection score. Uh, round three should happen shortly thereafter. Uh, concurrently, we're working on the new player tutorial system, and um, and we've started like getting the artists involved to help us put together the land presale. We have some pretty good working uh, concepts for how that will work, what that will look like, um, just on, on the the pen and paper level. And now we're starting to get that so that it it's ready to be displayed. Um, and concurrently, we're also working on getting the uh, the Guild Wars going. Um, and you guys have some sense of it's kind of this, um, you know, Royal Rumble style where all the guilds will be competing at roughly the same levels uh, for a common prize pool. And you guys will be duking it out there. Um and as you are winning things, the uh, you know you'll be able to go improve your guild buildings. Um, we're we're imagining three of those. You'll have your arena, which will determine what level of uh, cards are really usable, uh, and also how many fights will be allowed. Uh, you'll have your barracks, which will be sort of sets of uh, unique tweaks to your your guild uh, arena and some of the how that works. And then lastly, we'll have the shop. Uh, so as you are looking to unlock the coolest loot available, uh, you're gonna wanna have the, the best guild buildings. And I, I imagine to start, you know, at some of the lower levels, we're just gonna allow credits and dark energy crystals to kind of speed through and help you get kind of the, the lower level stuff. But uh, we're, I, I think we're thinking that for the higher level guild buildings, uh, we're really going to require some of these guild faction points be spent so that it's not just, oh, I spent the most and here it is. It's like you kind of got to grind it out as a team and get your guild functioning and working together to, to put that together. Um, okay, so... Um, for a few other questions now. Yeah, that, so now I was going to kind of head back and, and loop back around and head back down here. So yeah, there's, no there's, there was one at some point about achievements what, what kind of happened with achievements was we started working on them, and I, I forget what what other thing it was that came up and kind of bumped that out. Um, and then right now, you know, as we posted our roadmap, it's still it's still TBD. So we don't uh, we just feel like there's a lot of other things that are much higher priority right now. So I don't have a date for when we get to them. You know, perhaps we should uh, you know, take off the coming soon on the site for the moment. Um, but that's kind of what happened there. I mean, really, we, we have, like, a whole list of things that we want to do and that are cool, and we really have to focus on the ones that are that are going to take the game further, you know, and grow it, you know, as best as possible. Um, so that's that. I mean, boss fights, the Randolph ropes question, sort of falls into that same category, something we're absolutely going to do and is important. Um, but, that, you know, as far as our priority list, it's not the thing. You know, there are other things that are going to help grow the game better right now, in our opinion, um, that we, we have to focus on. Uh, Matt Clark says, when can we expect to hear the voice clips added to the game? That's a good question. I don't know what the status of the voice clips are. That should be a relatively easy, you know, project to do, which should just, you know, add some fun in there. So I like... I'll, I'll follow up on where we are with that, um, what we need to get it in. Um, I want to not show that if we've ever played any D&D-style games growing up or played a campaign together. Um, I played D&D only briefly when I was younger, and then I ended up getting into, like, EverQuest, and those MMO games, which I played way too much time <laughs> on. Um, I don't know about you, Agro. I have, like, 40 books in my house. I've been doing this stuff forever. Okay. 
Um, and actually, that was where that was really the start of the uh, campaign guide. Is that I was looking at all my my D and D shelf and being like, you know, uh, all of these games, like at some level, they have their campaign guide. And, you know, you had Greylock, and you had um, uh, I forget like the the they had like their gothic undead and Wolverine or um, um, like Canther uh, were- werewolves. So you have like your werewolves and vampires. There's all these like different settings. Uh, and I was thinking, you know, the, the Splinterlands really needs to have like its setting. We have to, if we're going to go tell some common stories, we have to have a common background. Uh, and that was, it was staring at some of my campaign guides for that that really gave me the impetus to say, let's go build this out so that we know what the, what our world looks like. Um, so then Neil's asking about when custom tokens for tournament entry, if, without waiting for me to add them to the list. Uh, so one thing, I mean, you know, we announced this in, a, in an update post a little bit ago, but I, I completely reworked how the, um, you know, external token prizes work for tournaments. So, I mean, I mean, Hive Engine counts as external. It's not directly part of the Hive blockchain or part of Square Lands. Um, so that that should make it way, way easier um, to add any new, at least Hive Engine token, but then also other tokens, you know, on other blockchain, EOS, Ether, DRC20s, or whatever. Um, in the tournament. I think we're always, it's always, I don't think it's going to be the case where like any random token can be used. I think there's always going to be a list that we will manage. Um, but going forward, it should be just much, much easier for us to just throw new tokens on the list and have that work. Um, it was it was kind of a, more of a little project before. So um, I hope to have some more tokens added, you know, within right after we do the, the release next week for the collection power stuff I want to add new I'll add new tokens in there and then you know if, if anyone wants new tokens to be added to the list just just ping me and it should be a super quick add uh, hopefully that answers that um, I don't know was uh, there, were there any questions I missed there? Uh, yeah, further up, BU is asking, could there be a land package specific for guilds to purchase where they are guaranteed one of the building types? So, like, do we want to guarantee that there'll be, like, a dungeon if, uh, if a guild purchases a, a whole sector? Um, only if BU will agree to finally come out to a crypto meetup in the Philadelphia area sometime <laughs> after COVID. I've been trying to get her to, to, to come out and meet in person for a long time. Um, no, but uh, in all seriousness, um, well, so so the buildings are are separate from the land in the sense that like you get land, and, um, then you can choose you know what building of the available options or if you want to build a building on that land. Uh, so the same I think would be true for for guilds and however that works. I have to say one thing that's still TBD and we didn't really get into that much in our discussions yesterday was exactly how the guild lands will work, whether that will be the same exact plots as player lands that just be owned by a guild, um, or if there's like separate, you know, guild land plots. Uh, so that's, that part's still TBD. Um, but, you know, it, and, but overall the idea is that lands will be involved in guilds and that the guild buildings that we have now will probably then become, you know, like the other buildings that are built on top of, of the land plots. Um, we got about four minutes. We got four minutes, Matt. So, just right, well, self Trader had a question. Any more thoughts on Splinterlands blockchain? Maybe a high fork. Um, that's not something we're planning on right now because a there's I don't see a reason to. Hive does what we what we needed to do, um, and I don't see any issues there like we had with Steam. Um, and that, that's also I, I don't I think people should not underestimate how much work goes into a blockchain fork, even though the Hive fork seems to be relatively easy and smooth, like, there's a ton of work that goes into that, and that's just not in our wheelhouse right now. You know, if there was a situation where we needed to do something like that, then we would we would do it, um, certainly, but uh, as much as possible, we want to focus on the game development and not blockchain development. 
Neil's asking for land purchase, building upgrades, uh, and the the DEC purchases. Is that going to be burned or recirculated? Um, I believe for that's a good question. So for for anything that the pre-sale and land sales initially is separate from DEC being used like to build buildings on land and within, within the expansion. So any DEC used to build buildings, upgrade them, whatever whatever the options are, those will all definitely be burned, just like DEC used for build building upgrades are burned. Um, you know, typically when it's a case of us selling stuff, like us selling packs, then the DEC is paid to us and it's not burned. Um, now, if if with the land pre-sale, that's like a, a ton of dark energy crystals, I think it might be a situation where we just decide to burn, you know, a large portion of that or something like that. The plan is like when we are selling something to players, then um, then it goes to us. Whereas if it's part of the, the game economy and ecosystem, which, which DICE and Orbs also fall into that category, like we don't consider us selling those, we consider those are part of the game so sort of everyone everyone's selling those in the sense that the dark energy crystals that you all hold are burned um so the the same would go for anything within for the land sale so i think the answer is it'll be a mix neil we'll have we'll have some that gets recirculated into the company and some that just gets nuked entirely i just was some like clarity on like when each of those things happen it's not just like random where we're just like hey we're just keep this dark energy crystal and we're going to burn these. It, it's a matter of whether it's buying something from us where you would normally buy it with dollars or Bitcoin or whatever versus part of the game ecosystem. Um, Splinterlands is a downloadable game. Uh, if you mean the app stores, that's something we're working on. If you mean desktop download, uh, we hadn't really planned for that, um, but I guess it's, it's you know, possible. Man, it's something to consider. Just slap this thing on Steam somehow. But I think you can get, once the mobile apps are out, we can put this on Steam. Not the blockchain, but the, the game business. Yeah, I guess. I don't, I don't want to like, guarantee anything there, because I haven't looked into it at all. Um, question based on the use question, what about players donating land to a guild? Yeah, that'll, that'll all come down to uh, you know how exactly the land works with the guilds. I don't, I don't know. If it's, if it's just like player regular player owned plots that guilds can use then then yeah absolutely players can just donate their plots to the guilds uh, but we'll see all right that's a that's a full hour today so that was a lot to kind of go through that'll be a lot to digest at some point in the not too distant future we'll try to get kind of like the next iteration of the the lands paper out just so that you guys can have a sense uh, things might not look exactly like what we've discussed, but uh, Matt and I are pretty strongly in consensus on what we've uh, put out there today. There are a couple neat things that we've held back uh, and some other cool pieces of this that, that I'm, I'm pretty stoked about that Matt's taking a lead on. And um, I don't know, I think, I think we're in a great spot of just uh, here's, here's our... Um, the dice, those have gone out. That's been really successful, and we're really excited for that. Um, we burned through 50 million dark energy crystals. That's fantastic. Um, and we'll have the collection power out soon. We think that'll do uh, wonders to try to, like, limit how much dark energy crystal is going out there. And that's good for everybody in the ecosystem, except for a couple of, a couple of people that might re resent that a bit. Uh, but for the... For the majority of people and majority of holders it's going to be a fantastic event um and then we have some some consensus on what the the guild wars will look like what this land pre-sale will look like and we're we're making some great headway so um so that's what i got uh sorry for a couple construction noises in the background but hopefully it's been okay um yes i have this recorded as soon as this is over which is now i'm gonna go upload this to youtube and uh, hopefully either today or tomorrow this will be available as a, a YouTube video and I'll slap it in a post too. So as always, I am insanely grateful to this community. You guys often drive me absolutely insane, but that said, you it, it's phenomenal. It, like 
Matt and I are so so blessed to to be a part of this, to be able to work on this full time, uh, to have a great team and a great company, to have uh, a lot of folks that are interested in looking at what we're doing. It's just it's just fantastic. So um, thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting this game. Thanks for holding these cards. Thanks for playing and um, thanks for sharing what we're doing in the Splinterlands because we're we're really breaking new ground here. Uh, Matt, anything you'd like to say in closing? No, you always say lots of good stuff, and then I don't have anything extra to add. <laughs> I'm going to go first next time. Okay, uh, we'll do that. Uh, speaking of which, next time, we wanted to go do this earlier next week, right? We want to do this was, at 9 a.m.? want to do a night, a night one? Uh, well, I thought we were going to do... Uh, next one would be morning, and then the one after that would be, like you said, like an evening or something. Yeah, that's fine. I mean, in general, we talked about varying the times to try to have as many people be able to if you want to do 9 a.m. Yeah. Eastern, which is 1 p.m. Uh, UTC, and that should be good. Yeah, so next one will be 9 a.m. So, um, so hopefully you guys like uh, rising up and getting out here. And um, Anyways, I'm, I'm grateful to this community. Thank you, guys. And uh, with that, we're done, and um, I'll, get this, I'll get this uploaded. Thanks so much, and you guys have a wonderful day. Bye.